Hello everyone, Spot the Bobcat here and welcome to Penumbra Overture. Now I've heard this was a horror game made by the same people who made Amnesia, The Dark Descent, and A Machine for Pigs. So I'm not really sure what to expect. Looks like a grave, so I might have to do something with the dead, but I could be completely wrong. But without nothing else to say, let's just get into it and find out. My story began in February year 2000. For my part in this allegory, I'm not going to make the same mistakes my father made. Howard vanished from my mother's life before I was even in it. So when he sent me a letter a few days after Mum's funeral, it was the first I'd ever heard from him. Pity he was dead. Writing from beyond the grave must be a genetic habit in my bloodline. His letter contained a key, instructions, pleas for forgiveness. I figured the dead don't have much use for absolution, so I turned to his prophetic passing, which he inexplicably expected to come any day. Clearly averse to explanations, my father preferred to leave directions to a bank on Mayfair I'd never even heard of. In that bank was a safety deposit box in his name, and myself as executor. Of course, I went as he knew I would. I discovered that despite the evidence, he'd been legally declared dead almost 30 years ago, and said the old book and collection of notes I found had, in the eyes of the law, been mine all this time. My father's instructions were to burn the documents, raise no further questions. But that was his error. No man's immune to the shameful trappings of curiosity, and my humanity got the better of me. The university I taught at was world-renowned for two things, physics and linguistics. I represented the first, and the man who stood for the second was stumped by my recent acquisition. The book was indecipherable. The notes, however, showed a location somewhere in uninhabited northern Greenland. Greenland? It took me almost a year to book the last flight I'd ever taken. As I watched civilization disappear along with Heathrow, I realised my father had disappeared three decades ago, almost to the day. And I considered in turn what it was that I was leaving behind. We landed on a strip of ice a few feet wide, and within minutes I was pulling away on a chartered boat, beginning the 12 hour journey that would lead me into my past. Almost docked, I better stall my gear. I think I left my torch in the desk room next to the bed, blah blah blah. Jack Daniels! Oh! Oh shit, okay. Dear Eric, just a quick note before you said sail and leave me once again. I've left you a little something to remember, to remember me by in the chest at the foot of your bed. I don't really know why you still only have one bed on board. Taking shifts because of it is no way to get your rest, but what does Fishman's wife know of life at sea? I'll be praying every night for you to m make the catch you need so that you can come back home to me safely. And soon, please don't be gone for five weeks like last time I know. I might nag sometimes, but I do love you, you know. I've washed those overalls of yours. I know you'll get them covered in assorted fish parts in no time. But I still feel better knowing they've had a wash. Before I forget, the hen Ricksons in the village have asked me to see if you'll be coming by any trout. But I said they were mostly out of season. If you do happen upon any, don't say anything. Stow them all in the face and I'll do something special with them to celebrate when you come home to me. The ship's captain deserves a little special treatment once in a while. Take care, my love. Alright. Break the Jack Daniels. Break the can? Can I? No. Screw you. I don't need your can of soup, bitch. I don't need your duffel bag. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, I can't even... 
I don't need the lock. Can I even open this? No, I can't. Um, okay then. Please down the deck, but I don't fancy braving that weather until I have to. What am I supposed to do? Oh. And then open up the locker. Should come in handy. And then use some batteries from my flashlight. Ooh. As I stepped off the boat sending out into the blizzard that had formed around me, I realized how utterly devoted I'd been to the discovery of my father's past. I had no idea what to expect. Soon enough, my concerns were justified. I don't know whether I lost my orientation or my spirit first. But I lost feeling in my extremity soon after new hypothermia was setting in. I started looking for shelter. So cold, I don't know where I am. I need shelter soon. Try a headwind now. A long time ago, I said. I need shelter. Ugh. By clicking to hold the interact button, I should just about manage to pick up that rock that calls me weak, I can still throw things. Yay! Okay. I went into a shelter in the cold ass ice in Greenland. <laughs> believe I fell that far in spite of that looking around maybe I didn't what is this place what is this place hello so there must be something in the way oh a flare <laughs> and a stick <gasps> barrels ooh Was it that far? Eh, who cares? It's shelter. Why would I be scared? I've been through amnesia before. <laughs> hey, what the hell am I supposed to do? Oh. Hello. Let's see, I can swing this hammer if I hold left mouse. Dude, there's a lot of ammunition down here. Sheesh. If I hold this hammer. Oh. Oh, screw you, barrels. I don't need you, barrels. I can break shit now with this fire and my hammer. Now to fuck up this door. Oh, 
Oh. Dude, move. Oh, yeah. Okay. Move out of the way. What's down here? Oh, that's just the same way I came. Alright. Oh! What the hell? The fuck is down there? Maybe there will be something in this barrel. No? Okay, whack. Nope. The fuck? Should I trust this? Hatch is seriously solid and won't open in my hand. So I'm not obviously wanting to keep people out or in. Hi. <laughs> what? What is this supposed to be? Oh! Okay. But why on earth would I go in here? There was the... There was the thing banging on that hatch like it wanted out. Who would want to go in there after that? I would run the heck away. Whatever I was descending into, it was a hundred feet below ground, protected by two solid metal hatches. Located in a remote arctic wilderness and buried beneath the snow, I didn't know what to expect, but it made me feel something I hadn't felt since I was a child. I've never given it much thought before, but I realized that our entire society is a network of safety nets. Emergency services at the end of a phone line, health and safety in the workplace, friends, family, lovers, all there. If something goes wrong, part of a carefully designed structure to prevent all but the most mundane of emotions. Once again, I felt like I did when I was in school surrounded by a closing ring of older kids. Knowing anyone that might help me, friends, parents, teachers were too scared or too far away. You yeah, living down there. Heroics are for Hollywood actors. If anyone or anything hears me, I'd best stop staying low and out of sand until I know whether or not it's threat crouching in my room. Best best to hide for a couple of seconds or so and perfectly still. That might make me properly hidden. Uh oh. Is there something here? Hello? Is there something here? I don't trust this place. This is an underground cave with that hatch was banging open. I don't trust whatever's down here. There is something down here. I know that for a fact. Oh, the sword. This reminds me of Amnesia. There's some sound effects in this from the same people. It reminds me of Amnesia. So, there's probably no way of self defense, so I have to figure out if there's anything down here or not. Because it might just. Uh, this is a horror game, though, so. It's a horror game, so I'm. <laughs> This has even worse of an atmosphere than Amnesia ever did. Dude, I feel so on edge. Like, I played so many games and, like, even Outlast didn't feel me this on edge. I don't know if there's. I don't even know if there's a thing walking around or if this is scripted or something.
painkillers, battery. What the hell it just happened? I don't know if that was such a good idea. There's paint. What is that? Oh, I don't trust that at all. I think I've got to close the door. Sounds like it could be a dog, but I don't want him. I think go in that room. I can hear her chattering. Thank God, maybe I can get some answers by wanting to open the door. Do you hear me now? Banging on your door with a <laughs> banging on your door with a hammer that probably got his attention. So I might be running from a person after all. So that makes me feel not better, I guess. I mean, I don't even know what to expect. Maybe there's someone walking around. Maybe that's why I can tell if I'm hidden or not. I don't even know. I don't... In front of whatever's around the corner, I need to hide. I do need to hide. Oh! Never been this year in my life, I can feel my heart racing. If anything gets within a few feet of my hiding spot, I better not stare it out. Anything within my field of vision might panic me and then I'll be gone. Is it still there? Hello? Are you the thing that was banging on the door? Is that a dog? Why would a dog be... Is that a dog? Oh! There is a wolf down here. Go, 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 go! Go, 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 go! Oh, there's a wolf down here. Oh, that's fucking weird and creepy. It's a wolf, but it might be really fucking fast. <gasps> oh, shit. That thing's just walking around. <gasps> oh! Fuck, go now, go now, go now. Oh, shit. Go, 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 go! Okay, is there anything down here? Backstrin? Command Munker Emergency Airstrip Zulu Weekly Report. Another unremarkable week in Greenland. Regular supply of shipment received. Standard emergency drills carried out. 
Routine runaway maintenance completed. I have ordered maintenance be carried out twice weekly from here on in due to increased snowfall. One wounded. The one wounded figure is no cause for concern back in London. The Germans haven't extended their front line by 4,000 miles. Two of my men were caught manufacturing cherry bombs in our workshop slash armory. And succeeded in blowing off a couple of fingers. I take partial responsibility for this in that I allowed them access to the demolitions manual we keep in the storeroom. And I'm sure that's seen where they learnt the ingredients as a precautionary measure. I have now locked up that manual in the chest in my office and will keep the key in my, on my person at all times. Needless to say, both men have been disciplined and the injured man has been sent home for medical care. I cannot help but think that a more suitable punishment would have been for him to stay out here, but the matter is out of my hands. The base is so disconnected, sometimes I feel as if this war could end and we might not even hear about it out here. Supplies requisition order. Dynamite for excavation purposes, seven bayonets, not necessary in my opinion, but procedure states we should have a full complement. One industrial ice pick for removing the damn ice that forms on the external hatch. One pair of reading glasses, category 7C, in order for myself, my glasses are in rather, are in rather a poor state of repair and could do with replacing. Reconditioning of the mine continues pre- Progress, the structure is being fortified from potential bomb damage and excavation of previously caved in areas is going ahead. One point of curiosity is some kind of archaeological find, an artifact buried in the earth and discovered by one of the work teams. Later this evening, after martial duty, I shall take a closer look at the artifact. It appears to be man-made and may have work and parts inside. I shall remove what looks like the front cover and see if I can discover the source of the light which constantly emanates from it. Chief NCO M Major. Another note, bruh. Copenhagen Post, Monday 17th, August 1930s. Psychotropic deposits at the bottom of Death Mine. Researchers at the University of Copenhagen have suggested that mind-altering chemicals naturally sown in the rock may be the cause of high suicide rates at a Greenland mine. The university, which has recently been conducting studies into isolated communities, first became interested in the workers of Northwestern Lead Mine last year. They discovered that even taking into account Greenland's naturally higher suicide rate local figures for the last 100 years were abnormally high at 46 deaths per 100,000 populants compared to the national average of 29. On further investigation, experts diagnose in many of the minor symptoms in common with the earlier stages of paranoid schizophrenia. This has prompted researchers to hypothesize that natural deposits of lysergic acid, a pH 4 formula recently discovered to have hallucinogenic proper properties may present in the rocks. Few locals were con conducive to interview, but those who agreed to speak had their own explanation. In Vit Spears, known as the Turngate Living in Mountains, the university is awaiting the results of chemical testing studies continue. And then a key. That sound reminds me of Misha though. Batteries. Beef jerky? Okay. It's locked. I need a key. Oh, a key. There. Big Book of Explosive, 1923 edition. Chapter 1.3 Black Match Fuse. The Black Match Fuse is one of the oldest, simplest, and most reliable fuses used in modern pyrotechnics. It is easy to create, essentially consisting of just string gunpowder, but be warned the chemicals concern will stain clothing, and as always, do concern as vice. Materials required string, preferably cotton, black gunpowder, backstring. 
The string should be coated with a thin layer of backstring which acts as an adhesive. The string is then carefully rolled into the gunpowder and left to dry at least a couple of minutes before use. Invented by Alfred Noble in 1866, dynamite is commonly used in construction, mining, and demolition. It has proved far safer to handle than alternatives such as pure nitroglycerine, provided that is, it has been properly stored. Over time, the explosive component of dynamite supposedly made safe by the presence of diatomaceous earth has a tendency to weep, making an old box of explosive liable to detonate on contact. Materials required one part blah 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 earth, three parts nitroglycerine, small amount of sodium carbonate, text unreadable, and then simply form into short sticks and wrapping paper. Antio was first discovered in 1863 by German chemist Joseph Wilbrand. It took some years before it yielded its true potential. That was because of the difficulty of making it explode and the lesser detonation in comparison to dynamite. The main advantage was. Discovered by the German Navy who employed TNT's relative explosive stability in order to cause massive damage to British warships. Their torpedoes could be detonated inside a ship's armor rather than exploding on contact as did other shells. Armstrong's mixture is included in this book as more of a point of interest and as a viable chemical mix. The formula exists as somewhat of a legend in modern pyrotechnics. Referenced by those knowledgeable enough to stay away from it as death mix. Its incredible vol volati volatility make it unsuitable for almost all potential applications. Materials require red phosphorus barium. This mixture can be carefully and slowly mixed in to minimize risk to the chemist. Sulfur can substitute for some or all of the barium to slightly decrease sensitivity. Alright. More beef jerky. Painkillers. All right. Um. Must. Nothing. All right. Wait. Alrighty. I don't know if it saves or not. However, thank you all for watching this video. I think that's enough penumbra overture for now. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe, comment, share. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.